Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we have a luxury highlighter showdown. I'm basically just going to be giving you information about the most recent luxury highlighters that have come out. I'm going to give you my rankings for which ones I prefer. I'm going to tell you about the differences in formula and colors, and hopefully this video is helpful to you in deciding what luxury highlighter you've been wanting to pick up if you've been on the fence. So I really do hope that this video is helpful for you guys. So let's just get into it. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys and hopefully helping you make your decisions on what is worth your money. So that is what this video is all about. I wasn't sure if I was gonna end up doing it, but you guys still seemed very interested in it. Recently, a lot of luxury highlighters have come out. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Wayne Goss highlighters. I wasn't gonna talk about these, but you guys wanted me to throw them in, so I figured it wouldn't hurt. We have the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Highlighter. We have the new Dior Backstage Glow Face Quad. We have the new Charlotte Tilbury Holiday Highlighter. And then we have the new Pat McGrath Holiday Highlighter. All of these have something in common. They really are quite pricey. I'm not going to talk too much about value in this video. I really want to get more so into the formulas, but I will give my two cents on value as well. So let's just get into it. We're going to start off from the most affordable to the most expensive. So the most affordable is actually going to be the Wayne Goss highlighters. So these are currently only available on the Beautylish website. And of course, the two colors that I'm speaking of today are sold out. But I did want to talk about the highlighter formulas in here. So actually, since this is a blush palette, I did the math. Not really. I did math in my head. 19 grams of product. So we're going to say there's about nine and a half grams of highlighter. The full price of this is $45. So we'll say you're getting about nine and a half grams for $23. That makes this by far the best deal out of this entire video. However, you will only get in one color. Um, so I have two highlighters to speak of. The first one is a blush peony and then the next one is coral rose. Now of the two I'm telling you right away I would highly recommend the coral rose highlighter. I think this one looks a little bit more smooth on the skin. It also swatches more smooth. His formula I would say is a creamy powder. It's definitely a powder formula but it does have a very wet creamy feel to it. Compared to some of the other ones that I'm dealing with today it is more on the powdery side. It's just we have a lot of baked gelée type formulas. I find blush peony to be a bit more powdery. You have to really kind of work it into the skin more than the coral rose highlighter. The blush peony is going to give you a pink shift highlight. The pink is actually quite strong but this looks gorgeous with its corresponding pink blush. I'm not strongly recommending this one as much as I do love a pink highlighter. I just think that the coral rose is so much better. I feel like it applies smoother to the skin and more easy. I feel like it doesn't emphasize texture. This is a really gorgeous glazed highlight. This was in my most recent monthly favorites. I've been enjoying this one a lot. Now let's take a look into the next most affordable. That one is going to be the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Glow Highlighter. Now this says it is limited edition for the holidays. $42 is what it is priced at for eight grams of product. That's about twice as much the value of the Wayne Goss. This is the highlighter that I'm actually wearing on this cheek today. This is a nude champagne color. It's going to be a baked gelée formula. So there is very minimal fallout with this. It's quite mess free. I wouldn't say it's the most smoothing highlight. It definitely doesn't smooth texture, but most highlighters don't. I don't think it emphasizes texture any more than any other highlighter also. I just really love the ease of use for this. I feel like you get so much product on your brush, but it doesn't over apply to the face, but at the same time you don't have to dig. And I think it's a really gorgeous everyday highlighter. It has a little bit more of a warm golden base to it, which makes it a little bit more wearable, but it still does have that metallic sheen to it. It actually swatches a lot darker than I feel like it applies to the skin. I do feel like it applies brighter. I think if you have a very fair complexion that you might have a cast with this one, but I do think light up to deeper complexions, you definitely can make this work. I can see this being a very versatile color. And if you look on my arm swatches, it is right here. It is definitely the most peachy out of every single one of the highlighters in here. 
but it has a very strong metallic shift to it. But you can easily blend that out or just apply a little bit for more of a natural sheen. So I've really been enjoying this one. So the next ones are the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palettes. So they already have two existing palettes in the line and Dior actually came out with three different colors. I picked up two of the colors. I picked out Pure Gold and then I picked out Rose Gold and I absolutely love these highlighters. I love the formulas. These definitely I would say are the most glitzy and glam. You can definitely see on my arm that these are the ones that have the most glitter and reflex. Now I do get asked all the time, are these highlighters glittery? The gold one, if you absolutely hate those microfine glitters, stay away from the gold one. This one is definitely more glittery, more metallic than the pink one. And I really do feel like though when you apply these to the cheek, you can make the glitter go away if you just swipe it away. But yes, you are going to get a little bit more of an extra sparkle than you are the other highlighters in this video when it comes to these Dior formulas. So if you're not into that, then definitely you want to stay away from these. But the gold one in particular, I feel like the shades have a little bit more of those microfine glitters. And glitters is a strong word. But I mean, if you just take a look on my arm, these eight shades are the Dior quads and you can clearly see they have more glimmer to them. Now, if you're okay with a little bit of glimmer, but you do want something more subdued, while there are a couple of the shades in this Dior formula that are a little bit more glimmery, like the gold color, I feel like this shade right here is a little bit more flat. So this palette isn't as glittery as the golden one, but this is a baked gelée formula that does have some glimmer. These are amongst my favorite formulas for sure, but it's not going to give you that super seamless, smooth glow to the cheek. And by the way, not sure if I mentioned this, but these are $45 each. You are getting 10 grams of product, which I thought this one would be the best value, but it's actually not in terms of product, but you do get the biggest bang for your buck in my opinion, because you get four different shades, which I prefer it that way. So so this next highlighter I was extremely hesitant to pick up. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Superstar Glow Highlighter specifically for the holidays. So it is limited edition. Now this is $55. When I first bought this, I could not believe I paid $55 for a highlighter. You are getting 11.5 grams of product, which is the most that we've seen thus far in a highlighter. But it's like, why do you want so much product for one highlighter? If you look on the swatches on my arm, it very clearly is the most subdued highlighter. It has the least amount of sheen. And you guys, I'm going to tell you right now, this is my absolute favorite highlighter of the moment. It's my favorite highlighter of all the highlighters that I'm talking about. And I also believe this is the most versatile for the most skin tones. Now the texture of this definitely has some kickback. You can see in the pan right here, there is a lot of kickback here. So it's a creamy formula, but you do get kickback with this formula where you almost just want to kind of press the powder in because you paid so much for it. The finish on the skin is unbelievable. It is a skin-like glow. It blends seamlessly into the skin. You can't see any trace of where you applied it at all. It just is a gorgeous glow. I'm floored by this highlighter. I've been recommending it the last couple of months. So if you watch me at all, I hope I've convinced you to buy it because I think it is phenomenal. So many of you guys have messaged me thanking me for recommending this highlighter. I know $55 is a lot and I don't think it's for everybody. But I will say of all the highlighters that I have here, this one is by far my favorite. I've been enjoying it. I don't have another highlighter that is like this finish wise, color wise. It's super unique for me. So I highly recommend it and I've seen it work on so many different skin tones. All right, so let's move on to the last highlighter, which is the most pricey. This is from Pat McGrath Labs and it is $65. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighter. $65 you are getting. Six point five grams of product. So not only do you pay the most upfront, I do also believe it is the worst value if you do the math. I will say though, this is the most luxurious packaging out of all of these highlighters. It is super heavy, you guys. This metal tin is so heavy and then you have to twist it. I don't really like this whole twist off cap packaging. It's not cheap packaging. It is very weighty, very luxurious, but it's not necessarily the most practical packaging. And the inside looks gorgeous. This is described as like a golden champagne color. It definitely looks almost a little bit pink when you see it in the pan. And this is the highlighter that I have on this cheek right now. And you can see the difference. The Natasha Denona has more of that gold warm base, whereas this one has, I feel like almost more of a white base. It's a little bit more, dare I say stark. It's not unflattering stark or too white or icy, but it does have more of a white base compared to the Natasha Denona. And I have to admit, I'm not 
crazy about this highlighter. It's more so of a cream formula. It's not a super creamy formula. There's literally no powder to this at all. You're not gonna get any fallout whatsoever. To the touch, it just, it feels like a cream to me. Definitely a hybrid for sure. I would say it's like 80% a cream product with a 20% powder mix in there. The color itself does pull brighter on the skin and it doesn't pull quite as pink as I thought, but I wouldn't necessarily call this like a champagne shade. I don't even know what to call it, but it is more so of a beaming highlight. Something to note about this though was it did take a lot of layering it up to get it to this intensity. The first initial application, I applied just a little bit and it was very, very natural. It's not necessarily very smoothing on the skin. It emphasizes my texture as any normal highlighter would, but I don't think it's anything to call home about personally. It's more so of a luxury experience, but I found it took me a lot of time to apply because I had to keep digging into it to get the finish on the skin that I wanted. I do recommend using a synthetic brush to kind of dig in there. I used a Bling Brush F17 to apply this highlighter, and for $65 and being the worst value, personally, I'm just not as into it. The only thing that's really unique about it is the packaging. And some Thing to point out, the Dior, the Charlotte, and the Natasha are all made in Italy. Wayne Goss is made in Canada, and then the Pat McGrath is made in Taiwan, which I'm very surprised by. I thought she would source these from Italy, like the majority of her great formulas. So I did want to do some swatch comparisons so you can see how the colors and formulas compared when they were side by side to each other. So quickly, let's take a look. So here is a swatch comparison of all of the highlight. We have the two Wayne Goss over here. This one is the Coral Rose highlight. This one is the blush peony. Then we have Natasha Denona I Need a Nude. Then this is the pure gold from Dior, these four. This is the pink from Dior, these four. This one is the Charlotte Tilbury, and then this one is the Pat McGrath. And so here are the main differences as I'm going down my arm. I think that the Wayne Goss is clearly a more powder formula compared to the other products, and they are a bit brighter, so they're going to fare better on lighter skin tones. That blush peony shade is extremely unique compared to everything else on my arm. The I Need a Nude shade from Natasha Denona is the most peachy, and then you can clearly see the Dior shades are going to give you the most glitz and glam on your cheek. They definitely have glitter in there that the other formulas do not have at all. Like, I wouldn't consider these formulas really glittery, but when you look at them compared to the other formulas, they, they look really glittery and much more metallic and much more foiled, so not for the faint of heart, for sure. The Charlotte Tilbury literally looks like nothing special on the arm at all. And then Pat McGrath, to even swatch it, I felt like I kind of had to dig into the pan to really get the payoff. Off. It definitely pulls more pink on the arm than it applies on the cheek and it definitely pulls darker on the arm than it applies on the cheek. So just keep that in mind. So let me take a minute and rank all of these highlighters from my least to my most favorite now. So we will start off at number seven, my least favorite, which unfortunately is the Pat McGrath. I love Pat McGrath. I had really high hopes for her first powder formula, but I just think it really is a bit too expensive for what it is. The packaging is just so luxurious but the product inside I just would reach for the other colors over this one. Moving in at number six is Blush Peony from Wayne Goss. This formula is a little bit more powdery and less creamy than the Coral Rose shade and it's absolutely gorgeous. I really do love this highlighter but it's just not a color that I'm going to reach for a ton. At number five we have the Dior Pure Gold highlighter. I really 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 love this but when I compared it to all of these other highlighters it's true this one is a little bit more glittery and it's not that I don't love glitter but so many of the highlighters that came out this time of year are so amazing that this one just fell here but I really really love it it was in my favorites video number four is the Natasha Denona I need a nude this is a stunning everyday highlight for me I can definitely see myself wearing this a lot just because it's ranked at number four doesn't mean I don't love it I absolutely love this highlighter the highlighters that came out are just so fantastic and this is a great basic everyday perfect highlighter. Moving in at number three, I just love the Dior formula so much and I prefer a pink highlighter so that is why I love these pinky based highlights in this pink quad and I like this over the gold because I feel like you get a little bit more variation in formula because you do have this shade right here which has zero glitter but you do have some of the glittery shades which I'm not opposed to a glittery highlight, okay? Ranking in at number two is the Coral Rose highlighter 
for some reason, this Wayne Goss highlighter is better than the other one. I just feel like the formula is a little bit more smooth. It's quite a beaming highlight, but what I'm most impressed about with this highlight is I feel like it literally smooths my texture and it blends seamlessly into the skin. It is just so creamy, so I do highly recommend this shade. The blush is beautiful too, but the highlight in here is really phenomenal. And then of course, no secret, I already gave the answer away, but this Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, I have no words. I've talked about it so much on my channel that I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's just number one. All right, you guys, so that is all I have for today's highlighter video. I hope you found it helpful and it helped you make your decisions if you were on the fence about which one you wanted to pick up. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.